second. What's that? Went down to my grandkids yesterday. The oldest one was a pretzel. No, they don't. But at least, at least you know the uncertainty. Welcome everyone tonight to the city meeting. I uh, would like to remind everybody if you could please turn off your uh, cell, cell phones, silence them, and uh, also remind everybody that um, these uh, meetings are broadcast uh, every day on Channel 2 at 6 p.m. And, and midnight and also available at YouTube. Um, so if we could go ahead and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance followed by a silent prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we're going to start off tonight with a couple of proclamations. Business consideration of previous meeting minutes. Anybody has any comments? I move to accept the minutes of the September 26, 2023 regular meeting. Second. Motion has been seconded. Beginning vote, voting with uh, Commissioner Leonhardt. Aye. 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 
Motion pass, 4-0. Second consideration ordinance, consideration of ordinance number 8226, approval of special use permit for 722 South 5th Street restaurant in OBD zoning district. Mr. Mayor and Commission, there have been no changes since the uh, reading on September 26th. Uh, this is just a rezoning uh, for a restaurant to be uh, placed at 722 South mm. 5th Street. Okay, special other, use permit. Special use permit, yes, sir. No. Any other comments? No. No. That'll entertain a motion. I think it's roll call. Oh, yes, it is a roll call vote. Aye. 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 Good deal. New business public comment. Sarah, we have some. We do. Folks here. Uh, first up, we have Marianne Neeland. Hi, I'm Marianne Neeland. I live at 113 in Southeast here in Leavenworth. And um, back in 2007, 2008, I just started a skate club at David Brewer for the skaters there because we didn't have a park and they didn't have anywhere to go. And what was happening was they were skating downtown, and none of us knew that we weren't allowed to, and there was a no skate zone until skateboards started getting taken away by police officers. That's when we learned that there was a no skate zone. So we had a policeman come and speak to them and show them the zone. I think it was Mike Adams, he was very nice, and, and then they understood. But we also started working towards getting a skate park built, and we started working with Julie at Parks and Rec who has since retired, but um, we took the boys, I, I'm seeing boys since we they literally were all boys at the time. We took them all around to a bunch of state parks around in the area. We went to Hutchinson, we went to Cape Water Springs, we went to Kansas City, and the kids got to get together and decide what they wanted in the skate park and what was feasible. And then we came up on the cadence to raise half the money because that's what they told us and we got the skate park and we are eternal grateful. But there was always a hope that it would get expanded and that was 2009 and it's not expanded yet so we are here to ask for expansion, maybe a whole and definitely some seating and some lighting. The kids do still use the park and they use it a lot and they do around. There's also bicyclists that use it and there are also roller skaters and for the leaders that use the park. It's not even just the people. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there a comment? Mm -hmm. uh, we now have Billy Nealon. so we don't waste too much of your time. We also wanted to talk about expanding the skate park because it's older than some of these kids here today. And uh, we really need it repainted because it's super slippery and sometimes the sun is beaming right at you. And uh, we would love to have some lights, especially during like daylight savings time when it gets dark really early. It would be great to have some seating because recently there were some benches there for about a week or two and we really miss those. And so we're just asking for some expansion, some lighting, and maybe even some seats for our skate park. And we want to shout out to Mayor Jermaine for helping us out along the way. He's a great guy. Hold him. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys, for coming. Anybody else, sir? Yep, that's that it? Okay. General items update on unsafe and dangerous fire damage structure 805 North 18th Street. Mr. Mayor, President Commission, this will be Hal Burdett, the Chief Building Inspector, to give an update on this item tonight. Good evening. Yeah. Uh, as the report says, this 805 North 18th was damaged by fire in January of this year. At a public hearing in July, the City Commission gave the gave a 90 days to do repairs. Uh, we are at that 90-day point. Uh, that progress has been made. The interior has been gutted, uh, ready for new electrical. I believe plumbing and heating will probably not require any work. On the exterior, they have uh, they have completed the roof repairs. 
They're still missing a window. The contractor told me that was probably another week or two before they received that window. And then they can uh, continue with the exterior repairs as well. When I spoke with him, he said he thought that they would be done by December, um, which is about 90 days. I told him we would may consider 60 days is what I would recommend to the commission because, you know, they should be at the point long before December to release the funds so that they can use that money to finish up the project. I am not sure if the contractor is here or anyone else is here tonight. Okay. I, and I guess to that point, is anybody here to speak to this property? 60 days is, is December. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. okay, cool. Any, uh, good, oh, good call. <laughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> Sorry. Appreciate that, Mr. Burdett. Any any comments from anybody? No, it looks like no. looks like they're they're on their way. So no, I'm it. happy to extend the, uh, mm -hmm. the hey, time. Hey, Commissioner Leonhard, I had a question. Mm -hmm. um, yes, ma'am. So if we get, of course, we get 60 days. Um, if we do that, it looks like. Most of it is interior work that needs to be done. Is that correct? So even if it was bad weather, they could still complete it in that timely manner? I would say yes. There, There's some painting and, and a few things that need to be done outside, but the majority of the work left, yes, is interior work. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner Leonard. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good with the 60 days, too, if we could just peg it to bring it up again at that time. Yep. We'll bring it back yep. to you sooner if they're ready before then. Sure. Okay, cool. Any other comments? Okay. Commissioner Hingill? No, I move that uh, we give a 60-day uh, extension to this work. Second. All right. Motion has been seconded. We begin voting with uh, Commissioner Bowder. Aye. 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 Motion passed 4 0. <clears throat> All right, moving on to bids, contracts, and agreements. Uh, number five, consider approval of design build contract for parks and rec office construction. To be Steve Grant, the director of parks and recreation. Thank you, Paul. Mayor Pro Tem, Commissioners, good evening. Good to be here with you this evening. This issue is to the, consider the approval of design build agreement with Sands Construction LLC for the design and construction of new park and recreation administrative offices to be located at the Riverfront Community Center. The 2023 CIP program construction of new administrative offices for Parks and Recreation. These offices will occupy what is currently referred to as the South Wing portion of the community center um, with access directly to the office area from S18 Street. It will give the Parks and Recreation Department a better opportunity to professionally serve the citizens of Leavenworth. We'll have a storefront um, with signage directly into the Parks and Recreation office where they'll be able to come directly directly to our area um, from the uh, from off of Esplanade. The city solicited qualifications uh, from design build teams for this project. The uh, design build is where both the designer and construction contractor are part of a team to work together uh, for a cost-effective design and construction project. This is the same process that you recently saw with the uh, design build for the uh, um, with the fire and mm -hmm. public works with the fire station and the WPC administrative offices. Um, the city, we, uh, so we solicited qualifications from the design bill firm. We received two proposals, um, which were reviewed by administrative review committee. That review committee consisted of myself, Chief Inspector Hal Burdett, Parks and Recreation Director, Deputy Director Brian Bailey, Community Center Maintenance Supervisor Chuck Phillips, as well as Community Center Manager Tammy Metzgar. Staff came to a consensus to negotiate with the design build team led by Sands Construction Company. Sands Construction will work in conjunction with, with their architecture subcontract, architecture firm sub, subcontractor Design Lab LLC on the formulation and completion of this project. This uh, design build agreement was also reviewed by our city attorney, Mr. David Waters, as well. So tonight, this is really the beginning of the process for this design bill. We're bringing forth to you um, the agreement so that we may enter into the design bill portion of, of the uh, Parks and Rec offices. As I mentioned, the 2023 CIP includes $385,000 um, for the construction of this project. Also, um, utilization of ARPA funds have been approved for um, using in this project. However, the, the 
Tonight we're just approving the, the ability to enter into this contract with Sands Construction. The final total project, which is Exhibit A in your, in your packet, the final amendment, will come back to the City Commission with the total uh, project cost, including, including the design portion of it. Okay. So that's... Um, so, so tonight, what staff is recommending is the commission approve the agreement between the city and Sands Construction and authorize the mayor to sign the agreement as well as Exhibit B, which is also in the packet, and that's just the insurance and bond requirements for uh, Sands Construction. So with that, I'll any, open up to any questions. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Just a couple of notes. Um, we try not to expand administrative offices or anything like that very regularly uh, with these projects. If anybody's been to the community center, you know where the Parks and Recreation office is. It's in the basement. It's through a single door. Um, there is no office space. There's no conference space. There's no meeting space. There's nowhere to meet a, an architect or an engineer or a vendor or the public or how, uh, hold a meeting with a, an upset parent or anything like that. There's, there's just no allocation for that for all. So that's why we, when we presented with the ARPA funds, it was such a priority. It's really more about giving a public face to the Parks and Recreation Office. Uh, on Sands Construction, the other thing is, too, you may be familiar, they did the county's rehab of the Cushing Hospital um, mm -hmm. and the Council on Aging, and so uh, we're very familiar with that project and the work they did there. So they, they're very familiar. They're a local company, and they do this type of work, and they do it well. So yeah. just a little more context. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Right now, all we're discussing is the contract itself. There is absolutely no, money. no price at this point. Yeah, and we have a cap on that, so we'll, we'll mm -hmm. bring it back for the final amount. Okay. Do we know when the design will begin? When the actual designing will begin? Yeah. Uh, pending your approval this evening, then um, they will will start uh, doing design work towards it, leading up towards a total cost of, of the project, um, including their design work, which will then come back for for yeah. your all approval. Okay. So, and, do we have some idea of when they expect to have the whole project done, you know, like next spring, next fall, something like that? I'm assuming uh, to be completed by spring. Uh, the Kind of the target is, is to get going on the design now this fall into winter, mm -hmm. and then, then um, it is a good indoor winter project. All of the work will be in the interior portion um, of the community center, so they'll be able to work all winter, hopefully to have it done, I would, I would hope, by late winter, um, kind of depending on their prop, their uh, um, all their other projects and their schedule. Okay, I was reading through it. Said the city's going to give uh, criteria to the designers as to what you want to have happen in there. Has that already happened? So we had a preliminary meeting with them, uh, talking about just very basic the number of offices, mm -hmm. uh, which obviously is, is dictated by our staff. Um, how how it would be laid out with the current walls that are there, the current kitchen, the current restroom facilities, what would change, um, how we would welcome the public in there with our administrative assistant office and, and, and possibly a, a seat. Very basic um, things, Commissioner. Um, um, but, but, you know, and then we talked about there's a lot of goes into moving HVAC, um, air, you know, um, fire suppression systems, and, and of course, all of all that goes into new technology mm -hmm. and wiring and everything as as they construct new walls, as they're um, sure. constructing the the offices. And what do you, what do you plan to do with the space that you're in now? So once you vacate it, <laughs> so we never have enough space. That's um, true. But That's the, right, the main thing it, it will Most become storage. our yeah it will become our maintenance office offices. Right now, our maintenance supervisor Chuck Phillips, his office is in the South Wing area. Mm -hmm. Out of his office, his one full-timer works, and his two temporary regulars all work in there, as well as all of the call-ins. So they all work out of the one office. So if they bring their lunch, they bring their coat, they bring their purse, whatever, it all goes in Chuck's office. So we're going to use at yeah. least a couple of those offices in that capacity. And then if we have a little bit extra room, maybe some storage. Good. Yep. Thank you. Sure. Cool deal. Uh, Commissioner Leonhard, any thoughts or questions? Uh, no, uh, I think it's just really exciting <laughs> for the employees uh, mm -hmm. to have this. This has been overdue. It's been much needed. And then it's also, it'll be nicer to welcome the public in. You know, if they want to talk to someone, it's just going to be a nicer place overall. So I'm excited for it. 
Did mm -hmm. you say there's going right. to be some conference room space? So what we will, we'll have a conference room, um, as well as the, the uh, community center manager, which is, as you know, is currently Tammy Mexico. We will, she will have a bigger office where she, that position has its own conference table as well, because mm -hmm. they meet mult, multiple times a day sure. with people looking to rent rooms, you know, mm -hmm. uh, for, mm -hmm. for um, wedding receptions and such. So that office will, will have the ability to meet separately in a small setting with maybe just a a bride or a bride and their parents or whatever and then we will have a conference room very similar to the finance conference room upstairs about that that similar size if you've been in there um, seat about 10 or 11 people yeah you should go down and see where Tammy works <laughs> oh no I've been there it's before pretty small. Yeah. oh yeah it's pretty small and a lot of times she meets with people in one of the waiting rooms if they're available you know but. yeah <laughs> it'll it'll really help yeah you know, the, the community center sells itself and then Tammy does a great job on top of that selling it but mm -hmm. then when you're when you're able to sit up in those offices and you you've got a view of the river which is the same view you have in the river view room you know it, right. it'll really help yeah. it'll help sell that facility as well Okay. Thank you. Well, with that, I'll uh, go ahead and entertain a motion. I move we. Um, <clears throat> sorry. I, I move <clears throat> that we approve the agreement between the city and Sands Construction LLC and authorize the mayor to sign the agreement, as well as Exhibit B insurance and bonds. Second. All right, the motion's been seconded. We'll begin voting with uh, Commissioner Leonhardt. Aye. 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 Motion passed 4 0. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Ms. Grant. Okay, item six consider approval to purchase bomb robot for the police department. Should we please Chief Pat Kitchens for this item? Hey, Chief. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem and Commission, the police department is before the governing body this evening asking for pre approval and move forward with the purchase and replacement of our bomb robot. The Leavenworth Police Department operates a three-person bomb unit that has a variety of pieces of equipment to help us mitigate um, any type of hazardous devices. Uh, one of those pieces of equipment is a bomb robot that is currently 21 years old and has uh, reached the end of its useful life cycle and is ready to be replaced. The dilemma that we face is that the construction of a new bomb robot takes between 32 and 36 weeks so what we would like, what I'm asking for is pre-approval to move forward with the issuing of a purchase order in 2023 with the full commitment that we will not spend any allocate money until 2024. In the 2024 capital improvement program budget, the city commission allocated $230,000 for the bond replacement. And so what we're trying to do is just get ahead of the curve and get started on the project. And the company, the vendor, would need our commitment to do that so we can move forward and they can get started. And when it's done, if, if you were to approve it tonight, sometime around the middle of May of 2024, it would be completed, and then we would allocate and pay for that. Um, as I indicated in the budget hearings, and remind you tonight, we expect um, <clears throat> some, some federal assistance in uh, cost offset in, in the amount of $105,000. Um, we are uh, supported by the FBI pretty heavily in terms of training funds and allocation equipment and that sort of thing. So um, they've, they've given us that indication they intend to uh, allocate to the city of Leavenworth $105,000 at some point next year uh, in the 2024 budget as well. And so that's what we're asking for is for you to pre-approve uh, and for us to be allowed to move forward now in 2023. Um, get that process started so we can complete it in, in the middle of 2024. And I'll answer whatever questions you might have. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate that. Yeah. Any questions at all? What are you going to name it? <laughs> well, sir, um, if I'm in charge of that, it'll be something like C3PO or R2D2, but I'll probably get outvoted for that. Um, we were thinking about maybe having some kids at one of the local schools have a robot naming contest or something yep. like that. Uh, oh, yes, sir. Name it after my name. Okay, what's your name? Casey. That's terrible. <laughs> so we'll figure out something on the robot. Uh, we sure. named it, the first one we have is named Jimmy. It was named after the original founding member of the bomb robot, Lieutenant Jim Dyson, way back in the early 90s when we first started. And so we did that in his honor right after he retired. But we'll figure out some way to name it, something clever. That's a good idea. Um, what are you going to do when you're re with Jimmy when he's retired? Oh, 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 that thing will probably be in a museum or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. We haven't quite got that far. Uh, I don't think we could sell that on eBay or anything or Craigslist, but we'll figure out something we'll do with that. 
um, uh, it's just old and, and out of date pretty quickly. So. So I, you know, thank you, Chief. I have just a quick question, Mr. Kramer, on our uh, PO language. When we have an open PO like that, what kind of uh, exit language do we have in those accepted purchase orders to, to get out in case there's like any delay? Since it is kind of a six, you know. Yeah, we still cost. have to absolutely accept the project. Mm -hmm. So that's just the budget authorization that they need. That the governing body is authorized the commission to approve it. Uh, or staff, it, once we accept the project, same mm -hmm. as a, a project, Steve Grant and I just met on the cooling centers today, we still haven't accepted that project, so we still have a payment outstanding. So the PO is the authorization, that's what they need to start the construction, but we absolutely have to accept the project at the end. No, that's cool. I didn't know yeah. on our POs, like, if yeah. there's anything, that if they don't deliver by such and such date, where then it POs null and void, you know, stuff like that. I so we know. don't normally put a time necessarily on construction projects we do. They have, There's so many calendar days, and then there's liquidated damages, or there's some sort of um, clawback. When we do equipment like this, it's usually a... Um, we don't normally have a time limit by which, uh, by which it has to be delivered. Okay. No, I'm just curious. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank Commissioner Bowder. No, I don't think so, because we're not, we're not paying for it ahead. I mean, no. paying just, for it when it just comes. Just issuizing mm -hmm. the PO. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Commissioner Leonhard? Uh, no, no comment. Okay. Well, with that, just uh, need a motion. I move we pre-approve the purchase of a new bomb robot from i Technologies in 2024 in the amount of $223,009.60. Second. Motion has been seconded. We'll begin voting with Commissioner Bowder. Aye. 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 All right, motion passed 4 0. Thank you, Chief. Thanks, sir. All right, staff report Convention and Visitors Bureau semi annual report. Yeah, this will be Christy Lee, the CVB manager, to give you her, her report. Good evening, Mayor Good evening. Tim, Commissioners. Good to be here. I did not load it on the computer, but I can. But I think everybody, do you have a copy in front of you? Mm -hmm. and we could just kind of go over the, the paperwork there. The That's fine. Um, discussion points tonight, I'll again kind of um, go over the national tourism industry, the state of the Kansas uh, industry, and then highlight some of the uh, Leavenworth tourism industry stats uh, for you tonight. So. Nationally, um, travel accounted for $1.2 trillion in direct spending in 2022 and supported nearly 15 million American workers. And uh, travel spending generated $160 billion in total tax revenue, including $84 billion in state and local tax revenue in 2022. It is on the rise again. Um, inbound international travel is helping with those statistics again, so that's always good to see. Um, up and coming right now is the artificial intelligence that's uh, all around us and everybody's uh, finding out about it and that. So same in the tourism industry. It's been making significant strides, um, providing more seamless experience for travelers. AR, AI is being used to drive quicker customer service, personalized recommendations, flight forecasting, and others. So I just, I think it's going to continue to be used more and more in the future and that, especially in the travel um, industry. The forecast looking into the future is, is still pretty bullish. 66% uh, of travelers are still planning to visit friends and family this fall. 53% um, are planning to, to do a fall uh, road trip and then on into the holidays when um, travel always increases uh, anyway, especially over the Thanksgiving. I think it's one of the largest uh, traveling weekends in the in the year um, and then even in that they're saying like the 17 percent are having have used that chat GPT AI to assist with their travel plans even on that end so it's it's out there and it's going to be used a whole lot more in the future so some of the stats from the uh, Kansas State tourism um, over on the side, I know we always talk about the economic impact of tourism and that, and this kind of just gives you a visual. The direct tourism impact is your visitor purchases, your lodging, your food, and your entertainment. Your indirect economic impact is your uh, supply <clears throat> chain, your taxes, and your wages paid. And your induced is your tourism employees, your supply chain employees, housing, local taxes, and then local purchases just to kind of show you that multiplier when tourism <coughs> dollar is spent in the community. 
Along the right-hand side, this is um, some of the tourism statistics from their year-end report. Over 33.7 million visitors to the state of Kansas, 11.2 billion total economic impact, 7 uh, billion direct visitor spending, along with all the other statistics you can kind of see right below there. I can uh, read them all, or I'm sure you can read them at your, at leisure, at your leisure in that. Um, some other Kansas tourism accomplishments. Uh, last, in 2022 was their first out-of-state state campaign that they've done in years. So everyone in the tourism industry was really excited with that. They're starting to do more television ads and that on cable, um, cable channels and that. And they are reporting that generating over 244 million impressions, increasing the travelks.com traffic by 48%. So that's a pretty good increase, and I hope they continue doing their out-of-state campaigns. Um, the 22, Kansas Day is uh, always in January, 29th and that, so the state has really, the last few years, kind of put a coordinated effort in doing a campaign on Kansas Day, and so far it's been paying off really well um, across their social media. They've increased views by 62% year over year, so... It's been a hit for them, and I can see them continuing to do um, something with that every year. Um, they were awarded, or they have awarded over 2.3 million in grants to 34 communities across the state. They're marking grants over $87,000 to 15 different communities. Their attraction development grants, um, 251,000 to 11 projects, and then their tourism attraction subgrants, 1.96 million to eight different projects in Kansas. And if you want a list of which projects they um, funded, just let me know and I can send you a list of, of which ones across the state uh, won those awards. Um, also down at the bottom, there's over 440 registered <laughs> agritourism businesses in the state. And there are actually 23 agritourism businesses located right here in Leavenworth County. Last weekend, they did have the call, um, call farm tour and that, and I believe almost 21 of those businesses participated in the uh, car, farm, car farm tour. So, um, they've distributed over 350,000 travel guides year to year, and that is where we do place an ad in every year in that, so um, it's just a, a great magazine. We also are um, placing ads in the Kansas Magazine um, almost every issue, which they have five issues a year. Some of their billboards that they've placed over the last uh, couple years there. Um, and now we're getting into the state, uh, the state of Kansas, their hotel report. Their occupancy rate is um, for August is 60.4%. Average daily rate for August was $101.93. And their rev par, which is revenue per available room, is at $61.60 for August. And moving right into the Leavenworth stats, the, um, this is from 50 miles out, and it's from January through end of July. And that, so as you can see, about 38.2% of the people arriving here in Leavenworth stay at least a day. 12% of those people stay two days. And uh, three days, 10% of the people. So, um, we are getting a lot of, of people coming here. I think on the next page it does unique visitors. So far this year are 102,099 visitors, and they have spent over 790 days in the city. So some of our top cities that are visiting us is Manhattan, Wichita, Topeka, St. Louis, Paola, Harrisonville, Missouri, um, Chicago, Omaha, Warrensburg, Missouri, Springfield, Missouri, and Ottawa, Kansas. Along the bottom are the top demographics in age, income, household, education, and ethnic. So um, you can kind of see where, uh, where those levels are landing. Again, just a little bit more on the, av the average length of stay then from our visitors 50 miles and out, 50 miles plus out are 3.1 days. Um, total trips so far out of the 162,000 unique visitors, total trips are 250,046. And uh, our biggest, 
Um, In-state travel is sitting right at about 21.1%. Visitors from Missouri are 19%. And Texas is coming in third with 8.6%. So, again, some of the top uh, points of interest in Leavenworth that people are coming to see. Obviously, Leavenworth, that's the top one. But then from there, the downtown area ranks second. The University of St. Mary, Fairfield Inn and Suites, Home Two Suites, the Leavenworth National Cemetery and the Chapel of Veterans. And again, as a whole, that equals the VA out there. So we are um, getting a lot of visitors coming into the VA. The Holiday Inn Express, Leavenworth Landing, the Hampton Inn, and then Great Life Golf and Fitness. <clears throat> Chrissy, I'm sorry. I was just curious, yeah. where is that data coming from? I'm just curious. What are those data points where they, you know, are putting a stat on it like that? Do you know? Okay, so we're using a, a system that's called Datafy, uh -huh. and it's a macro accruer. It doesn't do micro, so we've learned that a little bit. But basically what I do is I put in, um, it's 50 miles plus, it goes out to 4,000, so anywhere from between 50 and 4,000 miles, and then you put in your dates, and then the information comes in. You put in uh, your top cluster points that you want, and then... You put in the bottom, and basically the cluster points I used for this report were just Leavenworth and Fort Leavenworth, Leavenworth and Fort Leavenworth. So it I, brought I didn't, in the information for the whole the Leavenworth and Fort Leavenworth. No, and, and I'm, it breaks it down from there. And I'm sorry, I didn't know. Is, that, is, is it credit card transactions that are like oh, how is okay. it tracking this? Um, yeah. No, it's not not necessarily credit card transactions. This program um, is based off of apps. So depending, everybody has a phone. Or most everybody has a phone. And so if you have an app that's open that is part of their, um, their curriculum or whatever that they use, they have a, a, a bunch of different apps. So I mean, they're I connected like to that, somebody. Yeah. That's so got, yeah. basically, if okay. you have an app open on your phone and it pings when you're in a city, <laughs> that's how they can. And then they have all the. Uh, formulas behind the scenes to add or subtract. They supposedly guarantee these stats up to 90% accuracy. That makes sense. No, I was just so, curious. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure. I'm like, where are they getting this information at? Off so, the phone okay. for the most part and, huh. and the different, yeah. Okay, thank you. Sorry. You bet. <laughs> nope. um, and Leavenworth stats, uh, this is from the Smith Travel Research, and it's uh, January 1st through September 30th. Occupancy rates for um, the Leavenworth is at 68%, so we are a whole, you know, 10.3% 10, 10 above the state levels, which is great. Well, anyway, and then RevPAR revenue per available room is $79.17 for here, and average daily rate is $116.43. So our transient guest tax funds uh, now are January through September are five hundred and twenty-seven thousand four hundred and seventy-six dollars and ninety-two cents. Hmm. So a few of the website statistics on the bottoms: um, seventy-two unique uh, users and one hundred forty-three thousand page views. Top page visited have uh, our calendar events has moved up to the front. Before we were kind of just seeing homepage and USP and USDB. But Calendar of Events is our number one page visited right now, so that's really good. Um, page 10 kind of um, is a graph that our finance department came up with that I just I thought I'd share it with you. Basically, it uh, um, kind of does show a little bit that it is leveling off the last two years. Um, 22, we were up 3.5%, and year-to-date this year, we're up 1.2%. So we are leveling out a little bit. But um, we're still uh, above last year's numbers at this point. So, um, some other Leavenworth updates. We did hire Catherine uh, Chrissy Cohn on May 18th as the tourism part time clerk. Uh, and she was with Home, Dep Home Depot with, for over 10 years. So, she's been a, a really good fit for our office and, and has been a, a great um, help for us. Um, we're also, uh, and you've heard this before and have actually uh, helped with some of these, we were just, uh, we, um, we were proud to have helped with uh, itineraries and assisting our sister cities this year, both uh, Wagga Wagga Australia and Omi Hachiman Japan when they visited. So that was kind of our highlights from this year and, and it, it was a really nice uh, time with both of them. <laughs> Um, 11, other Leavenworth stats, uh, we do uh, 
our visitor guidebooks, we've already distributed over 12,000 this year. And basically, uh, hotels, trade shows, and local businesses, uh, tourist information centers across the state, direct requests, welcome bags, um, and then actual ones that we've mailed out uh, to uh, the other visitor centers in the state. Print advertising, uh, I've placed over 24 print ads. Um, online, we've, uh, we're in, on at least eight different banner ads. We have a search engine marketing campaign going. We do have an e-newsletter calendar that is emailed out to over 1,200 subscribers. And then our new stakeholders e-newsletter uh, newsletter is mailed out to over 102 <coughs> subscribers. And then along with all of our social media that we are um, keeping up with, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, uh, we do have a 7.5% increase of our followers over last year at the same time, so that's, uh, that's always good that we're uh, moving up a little bit. Um, Bi-monthly, uh, on face, uh, Facebook we are, our events, uh, our um, e-newsletter calendar that we send out to over 1,200 subscribers, we do that twice a month, and we've been boosting that on Facebook and that pretty regularly, so... Seeing that it gets reached, you know, hopefully it's, and the parameters that we're putting in there is any, you know, we're trying to get it out to people who are 30 miles and more out. So um, we're reaching uh, just in the last one that we sent out over 6,300 people, and we had 461 click-throughs to our website. So hopefully we're drawing some more people into some of our events. Yeah, your, your 7 half increase uh, stat for Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest, and Instagram, that's... I think that's a pretty good number right there. I'm, I was happy with it, yeah. <clears throat> yes, I yeah. was happy with hmm. that. Uh, we're also doing a, um, a holiday billboard campaign this fall, so or this Christmas season, so be on the lookout for those. One's going to be down on I-70 right in the Legends area, and then the other one's on Highway 7 um, out by, the, just up from the golf course away. So, and we're currently um, working, well, I don't know if we're going to get it done, we're hoping to, but we're working with Main Street on another possible commercial, and that, we did do one earlier in the summer with uh, the zip, summer zip trips, we did a commercial with, or we um, partnered with Main Street and put together a, a commercial that lasted uh, the whole zip trip period from like June through August. So that was, we don't have the complete numbers back from Fox 4 yet, but hopefully they'll send us a report on what all that impressions and that that, that brought in. And I, hopefully I can include that in the end, year end report. We hosted over six travel riders so far this year. I listed their names there, so if you get a chance, you can kind of look them up or that. But I feel like we got a lot of um, impressions back from them, a lot of good stories, a lot of good press and that. So. Um, continuing to share those stories when they, they pop up here and there. So, um, And then also working with the Kansas City Regional Destination Alliance. They also hired a media influencer over the summer. And uh, she, she visited each one of the, the communities within the KCRDA. And when she um, came here, she went to... I didn't write that down. Anyway, she, sorry about that. I'm trying to remember which attraction she went to, and I can't right now. But anyway, her overall um, media package or her um, blogging that she did had over 110,000 views um, through her uh, Instagram account. So anyway, um, some of our other, our, we did our transient guest tracks, our, our tourism grants in August of this year. Uh, Leavenworth County Historical Society and their Vintage Homes Tour and Women in History events uh, was uh, approved. The Leavenworth Charm Hunt and then the Kansas Miss Volunteer Pageant was approved for grants. Some of our upcoming group tours are listed there. We're most excited about the Mayflower Tours that's coming in 2024. They're coming six different times with uh, six different buses. They're gonna be staying for two nights each time as they're going on their way. And so it should amount to over 250 room nights Yay. from just the, the one That's tour. Good. So we're very excited about that, uh, that bit of business. And I just listed the trade shows and conferences that uh, I've attended and then some of our upcom upcoming uh, calendar events and events that we have coming on. And uh, with that, uh, uh, open it for questions and that, if anyone has any questions or...
that for me in my office. It's great to see the increases. and It's amazing the money that we get in our community to help us, you know, yeah, with tour, it, regard to tourism. I think it's been doing really well. Yeah, I think definitely getting on everybody's radar more and more and creating a little bit more buzz. It, you know, you never know what's going to sit in somebody's mind, especially while they're driving down the road. Right. So, well, if you look at 10 years ago, that. we didn't even have, you know, we've got four or five hotels here downtown right. that, and others throughout the area that bring in a lot of people in, so that helps a lot. And with transient guest tax, that helps your program, which helps us all. Mm -hmm. right. So. We appreciate everything that you do. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions, Commissioner Hingula or Commissioner Leonhard? All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, with that, we'll move to the uh, consent agenda. Commissioner Leonhard? Okay. <clears throat> I move to approve, cl approve claims for September 23rd, 2023 through October 6th, 2023 in the amount of $1,524,022.47, net amount for payroll number 20, effective October 6, 2023, in the amount of $371,068.30, no police and fire pension. Second. All right, motion's been seconded. <clears throat> we'll begin voting with uh, Commissioner Louder. Aye. Aye. Uh, Aye. All right, motion passed 4 0. That concludes our items uh, at the moment. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, Mr. Kramer. Do you have any? Yeah, just a few thing? things for uh, the good of the group. Um, just a heads up uh, at the October 24th <laughs> meeting, we will have a 4th Street project presentation. Um, we are getting really close to that. I won't steal too much of the thunder. The bids open for that November 15th. Construction starts uh, February 19th, uh, constructed in three phases. They'll start with sanitary and storm sewer um, with the project, and that will have a time limit on that project uh, to be open fully by traffic by next October. So looking at a February through October, we'll, of course, do a lot of public outreach and uh, communication to the commission and the public about how that's phased, the closures, um, and how that process is. But you'll get uh, a detailed briefing on that at the October 24th meeting. Um, we have announced the uh, Cody Park open house meetings for the sports court project, and that's October 26th. Uh, we're doing a daytime one from 11 to 1, if anybody wants to come, and then that evening from 5 to 7 at the Riverfront Community Center. Uh, we'll have some conceptual designs out there, but we're looking for public feedback. What do you want to see? What do you want that to look like? And I know there's some interested uh, people already because I've, uh, I've already heard. So we hope that everybody comes out and helps shape. I mean, it's for you. It's for the residents. It's for... Um, uh, more outdoor recreation, so we hope everybody gives a chance to give their input. And then finally, October 21st, which is a week from Saturday, at 5 p.m. is the Trunk or Treat. I believe we are sold out of vendor spots, um, so it's always an enormous That's event. Fun. So we hope for yeah. good weather that night. I know there's some city offices really get into the spirit, um, should be out there that night as well. So um, those are the items that I had tonight. Thank you. All right, thank you. Well, that will go around the table. Uh, Commissioner Leonhard? Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. We can hear you. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. No, I just really want to uh, thank everyone that was able to come out this past Saturday to the St. Joseph Church German Fest. Um, it was really a lot of great food and fellowship. Uh, I know there was a lot going on, and, you know, what's really great is... Uh, in the city of Lovemore and even surrounding cities, uh, especially this time of year, every weekend is fun-filled with all kinds of events, so you can't make them all. And the only other thing is uh, just uh, have a great rest of the week to everyone. Be safe. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mr. Hingula? Yeah, I, I got to uh, ditto Commissioner Leonhardt. There are all kinds of things going on here in the city of Leavenworth, <clears throat> and, and even further out a little bit, but... Uh, there's a lot going on. This past Saturday, Saturday I, was, uh, I was able to go to the Oktoberfest that was put on by Wilcott Brewing. We closed down 6th Street, but uh, they made really good use of it. And uh, there was a lot of fun being had by everybody from you know, little tiny ones to our seasoned citizens. 
uh, of which I am one. But uh, but there was a lot of fun there. And then I got I was able to get over to the German Fest, and uh, yeah, the sour Broughton was good. Mm -hmm. Everybody have a great rest of the week. Please be safe. All right. Thank you, sir. Mr. Butter. I got a really nice letter um, on a writer from a, a writer who was. Uh, um, who, who rode our, our bus to go pick up his new truck, and um, I, I just, it's, it's good to, to hear positive things. He used the app and said it was easy to use, and, and they came quickly, and they, they got him, took care of him, and other people were riding too, and they got them to where they needed, and I've heard really good things, so um, just I'm, shout out to the guidance center, and the the, uh, the drivers are great. The, st the staff <coughs> over there is great, and we really appreciate them. That's all I have. Thank all right. You. Thank you. Uh, I just want to say, uh, uh, kind of on a, on a somber note here, um, our, our hearts and, and our prayers uh, definitely go out to the uh, nation of Israel over the weekend, um, the, uh, the terrible attacks that happen and uh, for the families and indiv individuals that lost their lives. You know, there's a lot of um, sorrow over there right now. And um, definitely I want to lift you all up in uh, prayer. And uh, as we go forward and for the uh, Lord's protection on you all. So with that, I'll uh, enter motion to uh, adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.